I have some incredible news. I found a boat which will take me back to France, back to the mainland of Europe, which is great. That will give me a lot more freedom to continue with this adventure. It was so hard to find that boat. I'm so glad that I finally found a boat off this island. And it was so hard to say goodbye to Margarita and her wonderful hostel, where I felt so comfortable. And it was such a, yeah, almost a divine place in the world to stay with such a good energy. And I had to say goodbye to so many wonderful souls that I met in that hostel too. But now it's a new chapter, sailing again. I'm so excited. One last look at the unique Azorian houses and at the lush green volcanic craters. One last walk to the harbor, but other than the other countless walks to the harbor, this time to actually sail away. One last look at the Azorian cargo ships which are carrying cars on top of the containers. And the island seemed to have noticed that I'm leaving and gifted me with its best rainbow. And there she was, my new hitchhiking ride, a wonderful sailing vessel named Life Song. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> mm, looks good, Emma. Thank you. Let me yeah. introduce you to my new sailing Quack, family. Quack, Quack. Quack, Quack. <laughs> Let's bye bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> Big family from Canada who decided to take a hitchhiker all the way to Brest. So I'm really happy to meet you and I hope we have a great crossing together. <laughs> we will. <laughs> okay, you go. Bye bye! Oh, finally, finally I'm sailing away from this island again. Can't believe it. And then seeing the island sailing away from San Miguel, it was absolutely incredible to see it one last time from the water, from the distance, slowly disappearing on the horizon. But then when we came around the island, suddenly there were pretty big waves and since we were all not adjusted to that yet, uh, some of us got really seasick. And yeah, there were a lot of people puking, uh, me included after a while. I had to puke like four times that night, which was not comfortable. It's like these times of sailing where you just wish that everything would stop and the movement would stop you know making you sick and everything hurts and you puking so much that you have nothing in your stomach anymore but you're still puking the last bit of water and, and acid out of your stomach and it just starts to hurt but yeah on the next day it was better and then we slowly could enjoy the sailing and the sunsets and the air and the nothingness the disconnectedness without any cell phone reception without any news just being there having time to think and space to breathe
So we have been fishing this whole journey and we got no fish so far. Just me. I just got a fish, lucky me. Uh, yeah, this is my first fish in my life that I ever fished. And yeah, I, I did a lot of effort to get that fish. I just saw it laying on the deck in front and I was going there <laughs> catching the fish and it was already dead. So we cannot throw it in the water anymore. So I guess we have to eat it now. Otherwise it would be a waste. <laughs> What do you think about my first fish? <laughs> you're, you're very good uh, fisherman. fisherman. <laughs> very, very okay. good. Christoph and Emma are a full-time nomadic sailing family. They specialized in doing charters in Arctic and Antarctic areas and they're doing crazy things like skiing and sailing in the fjords of Norway and going to Greenland and stuff like that. It's, it's really amazing. But right now they are not chartering, right now they're just going to France and I managed to hitchhike their boat, which is incredible because I've never sailed something like this before. This is really something else. For example, my cabin, I have a whole cabin for myself with a private shower and toilet but that's crazy that's like such a luxury on a sailboat and this is really a luxury sailboat and it's really fast as well it's it's crazy fast the fastest thing i ever sailed life song is an incredible aluminium 20 meter yacht equipped to go anywhere like into the arctic and really remote regions and it is in such a good condition but it was not always like that this boat was actually almost destroyed in the hurricane Irma and Christoph basically bought the wreck of this boat and the mast was completely crushed the side of the boat was completely crushed he had to cut out many many meters of the aluminium of the hull and weld in some new plates of aluminium and the mast had to be completely replaced and all the rigging of course and it was a big big job but now she's so beautiful again and the best thing is that after rebuilding her completely, Christoph knows her in and out, which is very important as a captain that you can fix ideally everything on the sea without any help from anybody else. That's a big safety aspect and Christoph is just a great captain. Can you believe it? A boat on the horizon? Actually pretty close, not on the horizon. After a few days of seeing no other boat around, it's kind of a special thing to look at a boat which is just going by. <laughs> and another very interesting thing for me was that they have two babies on board. One eight month old and one three year old. That was really interesting to see how you can handle sailing and small kids at the same time but while being on sea and it's definitely a lot of extra work it's definitely very exhausting additionally to the sailing but how they handle this is incredible and it's definitely possible <laughs> Then the food, oh my god. In my experience, when you're sailing with French people or French Canadian people, they love to cook and they love to eat great food. They really take pride in making great dishes. Even at sea, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to cook because everything is moving all the time. So it's really crazy if you cut some vegetables, they can fly around in the boat or your knives can fly around and you need to be really careful. But in the end, if you take a little bit of precaution, you can cook great dishes and bake cakes, even bake cakes. Oh my God, they made so good cakes and desserts. <laughs> it was really like a luxury cruise. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> You excited about the cake, huh? <laughs> Hurry up, oh. she's gonna eat it. Okay, like, like. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, looks great. There's a heart. Yeah. There's some hearts created. Mm. Mm. It's already good. 
Nice. All members of the Lifesong family were just incredibly inviting and friendly humans that were just, you know, kind of adopting me like a son for the voyage until Brest. And all of them were living lives of passion. They didn't settle for anything else than what is their passion and they worked incredibly hard for it. And their lifestyle is not easy, but because of that, I think, they have this sparkling in their eyes, each of them. If they talk about what they're doing, they're so passionate about it. And it was so wonderful to be around these people for this while. And Christoph is the most knowledgeable and most experienced captain I've ever sailed with. He's a captain which makes you as a crew feel like a king, which is not always the case. Many captains, they act a little bit arrogantly or show you, you know, what is your position as a crew and they expect you to work for them all the time. But Christoph was the opposite of that. He was so knowledgeable and respectable, but at the same time he was like my friend and he brought me a hot cup of tea on my watch or he brought me a sandwich. It's small things like that which really make a difference. And I think his way of being the captain is the greatest I've ever experienced and he's a great example for me. And we had countless talks about my plan of hitchhiking around the globe. And he really tried to help me finding the best sailing routes in the best sailing seasons and was really interested in what I was doing. And I cannot express how much I appreciate that and feel really blessed that I found this boat to sail back to Europe. Finally a fish in the morning of the last day. Oh! Sushi! <laughs> Sushi. <laughs> oh my god, such a beautiful Hi. being! <laughs> Look at this happy face in the morning. Hey. Just ran out of bed. <laughs> we know now for the, what we have for the breakfast. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I already had a cake and a toast for breakfast and a tea. <laughs> yeah. And now a fish. <laughs> What do you think? Oh, it's so heavy. And then I was holding such a heavy fish before. Oh, it's, it's so slippery. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh my god, a second one! Oh yeah! The same one! Your brother! Oh no! Poor family. I was so fascinated by this beautiful creature of the oceans that we just pulled out of the water and I always have mixed feelings about eating animals but this fish at least lived a life with such freedom like we humans could never achieve. Master Yoyo, two big first times today. First time kind of catching a fish and gutting a fish, like a huge fish. And then one crazy thing is I never ate sushi my whole life. I don't know why, but it never happened. So now I'm making, learning how to make my own sushi and eating the first sushi of my life. How amazing is that? Self-caught tuna mm, on a sailboat. Going to France, reaching France in one few hours. What an incredible day. <laughs> I already in Japan now. Oh, first time trying sushi. First, the sauce without wasabi to get the natural flavor. It's a big beat. It's so fresh and so strong flavor with the soy sauce. Mm. So good. You could do a publicity. <laughs> <laughs>
I can smell land. We arrived near Brest in Brittany. Beautiful friends, back at it again. Going one step back to go forward. Oh, it's incredible. After being at sea for such a long time, you smell the tree even from the distance. You smell like the land and then it's such a weird smell now. It's such a dry smell. One love, y'all. The way to death. United baby. Under one roof. Come on. In a house. A house of sounds. It's one love, y'all. Forever and ever. We are free. We are love. We're round. We're skinny. We're big. We're small. But we have love in our heart. And we want you in. As long as you bring the love. Running. <laughs> just running. You can't believe how good just running is after being nine days at sea. I'm so excited to be at land, to eat a croissant, to eat a baguette, to drink a coffee, to do some running stuff. It's a spying headlamp. <laughs> I never see a hook with that. <laughs> <laughs> and we have no more propane. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we start to, we start to take some wood and make a bonfire on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> or on the, on the engine. Oh yeah. For engine on full speed and <laughs> on the engine. <laughs> Thank you so much for your precious time and enjoying this adventure with me. If you can't wait to see how this journey will continue, you can get instant early access to the next episode on my Patreon page. This project is only possible through your support on Patreon. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs>